What's up everybody? Good morning, good morning. Okay, so for today's video, we're going to be checking engine head clearance. So right here, I have my, what is this, a P22, no, P2, P2F2 head, which I believe is off from a Y7 um, D16 single cam. So I'm going to check the engine head clearance on this. So basically to do that, we need to flip the engine head over, right, expose the valves and all that good stuff. And so we're going to grab our straight edge, grab your set of um, feeder gauges, and grab your two thousandths of an inch, which should be 0 0.002, yeah, thousandths. So we're going to go ahead and grab that and check the clearance. So if it's within, if the two thousandths um, feeder gauge, it fits through, then that's bad. That means that it's warped, so we need to go ahead and take it to the machine shop to have them resurface it. If it doesn't fit, then we're good. It's advisable to still get a resurface, but it's up to you solely. If it's out of spec, if the two thousandths of an inch feeder gauge fits, then yeah, highly recommend go ahead and get it uh, resurfaced. So we're gonna go ahead and check that. Okay, so ideally you would want the, you know, the V-clamp uh, engine stands. I don't have it yet. Uh, should be ordering it soon. I said that last time. But anyways, I have this set up as I showed you guys in previous uh, clips. You know, I have it set up like this, that way the valves aren't touching. But at this point it shouldn't matter because they're all tucked in. Anyways, let's get to it. So we're gonna flip this over. Mm. The engine, I mean the engine manifold. The exhaust went for came off. And that neighbor's gonna give me copyright, man. Exposed, right? All the valves are tucked in. So that's what we want, right? Because before, at TDC, when I took off the head, I had cylinder number one at TDC, so all these were tucked in. Cylinder number four was not at TDC, but it was at overlap. So basically these were tucked in too. So both of these were good, but one was at TDC. And then exhaust valves on two were up, intake valves on three were up as well. So in order to get those down, you guys saw, take off the camshaft and uh, the rock arm assembly. So in order to check the straightness of the head, you gotta use a straight edge. This right here is a straight edge. And it's supposed to be extremely straight from what we're told. So it's not a ruler, it's a straight edge. I think even a ruler is not as straight. Even this is not as straight, but it's straight to certain parameters which is straight enough for you to uh, see if the head is warped or not. So, once you get your straight edge, this is a 24 inch, it should be more than enough. Before I check the straight edge, which is what I was about to do, I forgot that uh, sometimes the head gasket gets stuck on there. In this case, I was lucky. Uh, since the head gasket was pretty new, um, the head gasket uh, it wasn't stuck on there. Usually they get stuck on there if it overheats like way too much or if it's been on there for like a long long time but in my case we're good though so but just in case yours is stuck I do have like little bits and pieces um, you want to use acetone get it at AutoZone, Harbor Freight, uh, Walmart, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's all of them should be good to go um, so you go ahead and get some acetone and once you get the acetone spray it on there wipe it down you see like little pieces like that that's a little bit of head gasket there right here that's a little bit there right here right there right there so you just want to clean it off in the middle right here the reasoning behind that is because you don't want any discrepancies in your measurements so let's say if it tells you that um let's say if your head is really warped right but since you have some of that material on there and it gives it a little more um height it might tell you that it's like sealing correctly or that you know there's no uh there's no warpage or there's no you know it's it might tell you that the two thousandths of an inch feeler gauge doesn't fit because there might be some of that like little gunk or gasket material but that's bad because when you actually come to clean it which you should when you put on your new head gasket on top of your block um guess what it's gonna leak so you want to make sure that your the surface is completely clean before you start measuring the clearance that way you don't have any discrepancies and errors you want to make sure that you're as accurate as possible so for the acetone something like this it's perfectly fine. 
Got this at AutoZone. Trust me, it'll work. <laughs> if it doesn't, yeah, uh, you can flame me for it. And these towels, I love these, man. They're pretty durable. All right, so go ahead and open up your bottle real quick, and then grab your grab your towel. What's happening back there? Just gonna grab just a little bit. Should be enough. And just go ahead and just wipe it. Look, we're gonna try to do this area here first. Voila! Look at that. So just go ahead, take your time, get your tunes. There's nothing better, man, than just working in the garage with your tunes. Look at that, you see? It starts getting removed off of there. And then keep keep on uh, spraying it down. Also, try to be careful to not try to get these little fillings in there. Don't go too crazy. Because if you get something like this and the little pores and the little oil jackets or the coolant jackets, that might not be too good so just try to try to be careful is all i'm telling you i found that uh the little shop towel was like disintegrating and you know it's not really too good so just use a rag better i mean this rag is not gonna peel off so this should be the better alternative all right so let me use the acetone here let me see what area looks pretty bad Let's do this area right here. You can see like the before and after. Look at that. Haven't even taken this to the machine shop and this thing already looks hella clean. Damn. Yeah, it looks nice, man. Looks way better. Again, you don't have to have it shiny metal, uh, but just enough to the point where, you know, you don't have any of that gasket stuff on there. I love working on these. All fun and games it is working on a car until you have a, until you have like a bushing that you can't punch out or have to bust out the torch or something. Especially around the combustion chamber here, there's like little pieces of of gasket, of gasket, <clears throat> and it's just ripping it right off. Yeah, no, highly recommend the rag. Don't don't use those shop towels. You're gonna be blowing by like 30 just for one one cylinder. Oh, come on, neighbor, man, I'm trying to record here, bro. Okay, there we go. That was good to me. All right, so once you're ready to rock and roll, you're ready to measure your clearance. Oh, I had to remove my upper timing cover because it was it was uh, protruding just a little bit up. Anyways, 210 millimeter bolts, nothing crazy. So once you're ready to go, go ahead and grab your feeler gauge and look for two thousandths of an inch. Should be this one. 0 0.02. It's so hard to keep these things steady. It's so thin. It's like it's flapping like it's ridiculous. Anyways, two one thousandths of an inch, zero point zero two or point zero five one millimeters. It's so thin. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and grab it. Okay, and we're gonna measure in specific ways. So we're going to measure like this three times horizontally. So it's gonna be. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, so that's three times like that. And then you're going to measure in every cylinder. You go like that. Bam, 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 and bam. Once you do that, you're going to go diagonally. You're going to go like this, and you're going to go like this. 
and you should be good. I believe the manual has you do the cylinders, right? One, two, three, four, or four, three, two, one. And then I think it only has you go down the middle. I don't think it has you do this one or this one. It doesn't hurt. I mean, you can be here all day if you want, but let me go ahead and show you how, how I should go. Let's put it down the middle first like this, right? Straight, make sure it's not like tilting up one way. No, make sure it's like straight down. Okay, you're gonna grab your feeler gauge. You're gonna go ahead and try to fit it in there. So you see how it's bouncing off? It's not going through. Okay. Same thing here. So that's good. So we're, we measure between one and two, two and three, and now three and four. Okay, now let's measure the edges here. Nope, it's good. And then measure over here. Okay, we're good there. So that's good. And now we're gonna measure on top. Again, you can be here all day measuring every exact point. And right now we're only measuring on one side. You also have to measure on the other side. Now we're good there. Yeah, if you grab one of the oil galleys or the coolant galleys, um, it'll make that little sound like because it got caught on it. But so far, so good, man. And then here it goes through because it's already, it's outside of the groove there. So yeah, that's that. Let's do it here. Yeah, no. Nothing there. Nothing there. Now let's measure this last side. Yeah, we're good. So we should also measure, you know, we just did it like this, like this, like this. We did it from this side. Now we should also do it from the other side. So I'll go ahead and do that or else this video is going to be like 40 minutes long. Now I'm going to do it diagonally. About there, that should be good. Remember when you uh, when you torque down the head uh, to the block with the head gasket in between, there is pressure. Um, so you kind of mimic the pressure when setting down the, the straight edge on here. Because obviously if you have it just resting on there, chances are that the feeder gauge might go through. So go ahead and put pressure. I mean, should be the obvious, right? And it doesn't go through. If it grabs, like, if you have, if it's a little hard for you to pull back the feeler gauge, yeah, that's a problem. But if it just bounces off, yeah, you're good. So far, so far, so good. So far. Okay, that's good. And again, you, you, can, you can do so many variations of this. You can go so many times. Oh, what the? Oh, hell no. Nah. If there's really a warp like here, look at that. Look, look, look. It goes in. Well, that's not even cool. If it really, if it's really warped, it doesn't matter how much pressure you put down. The pressure, the pressure they put down won't decrease um, the space in between the 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 straight edge and the head it's not like it's like foam or anything that'll take on the shape oh yeah that's bad that's really bad yeah no it's 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 warped here okay you see imagine if i didn't uh if i didn't measure that one there yeah no i'm putting pressure here so between one and two this part right here which makes sense though. Uh, I'll show you guys the head gasket. It makes sense. I, 
I should expect some kind of uh, warpage here. So I'm not I'm not surprised about that one. Yeah, that's that's, that's bad. And then again, you're supposed to check it from the other side too. I'm telling you, man, this thing, you'll be here all freaking day doing this thing. So this engine head, uh, when I bought the car, car was perfectly fine. I'll explain to you guys how the head gasket blew, rookie ass move. The engine is good, so I have no suspicion of it cracking. Um, I wasn't racing when it blew up, so honestly, I think we're good. But I want to get the head pressure tested. Basically, they insert a bunch of pressure to see if the head is cracked. Highly doubt it. Highly doubt it. And then might as well, when I'm there, they can also check head clearances. It'll be fun. We'll go ahead and take the head to the machine shop. They'll go ahead and get it machined. Uh, that's pretty much it for this test for the engine of for the head clearance. So we're good. So you guys, that's pretty much it. That's how you check your head clearance on a D16 head. Honestly, for most heads, if I'm being honest, uh, most of them, I mean, not all heads are aluminum. For Hondas, uh, D series, B series, can't say specifically for K series, haven't had the opportunity to work on a K series, um, but B series and D series, yeah, it should be two thousandths of an inch. If it's, if uh, you have, if you have clearance that's more than two thousandths of an inch, yeah, you have to get it resurfaced. Um, if it's not, then you're good. But yeah. Alrighty guys, that's it for this video. Stay positive, stay optimistic, have fun. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.